hey Josh, thanks for joining us today. Can you can you tell us a little bit about who you are and how we know each other? Uh, my name's Josh. I'm a former student of James, Mr. Nichols. Um, yeah, we we know each other from from my my days at Stafford College, I guess. So, what what year did you leave the college, and what have you done since leaving college? Uh, I left the college in 2016, um, and obviously doing a foundation degree, I wanted to top that up to um, a full degree. Um, so I went to Manchester Film School to do my final year, uh, which I graduated from 2017 uh, with a first. Yeah, congrats, man. So it's a great achievement to come out of university with a first class. Yes, I was, uh, I was pretty proud um, proud of it, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and what do you do for a career, Josh? Uh, so now um, I work in the lighting department, mainly on um, TV commercials, but I do all sorts of uh, um, bits and bobs, music videos, uh, you know, bit, bits on feature films and, and TV series and bits and bobs. But yeah, it's just the lighting department for film and TV. And can you take us through what an average day is working in the lighting department on a film shoot or on a TV yeah. shoot or commercial? I'll, I'll go with a commercial. So a usual day of commercial. So you do, uh, it's an 11 hour day, 10 days, 10 hours working, one hour lunch. So the, the whole day is 11 hours. Um, you know, you'll get there, you'll, um, you'll speak, so as, as, a, as a spark, you'll speak to the gaffer and the gaffer will tell you, you know, uh, this is this is like a rough plan for the day, um, and and just set out the store and, and be like, right, we need to get this set up for the first shot, and then you'll 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 get to the van and um, get whatever you need off and set it up and and work to his specification basically, um, and then as the day progresses, you'll you'll probably split off into if it, if it's a bigger um, commercial, split off into sort of two two groups ish like a, a couple of people will go ahead and pre-light the next bit while the gaffer and someone will will be servicing where they're shooting um and and then yeah and as that's pre-lit and, and the gaffer moves over then you'll you might like something else will take down the the the, the first shot and all the bits there it's just yeah um yeah and then at the end of the day take it all down chuck it back on the van and go home sort of thing and and what sort of budgets do, do the shoots you're working on tend to tend to revolve around do they tend to be similar or um so a lot of the stuff i do at the moment is uh, reasonably small and uh commercial uh, but it, it really depends at, um I, I mean i don't know the budget specifically i, I don't really get told that but you know some of the stuff that I work on uh, I do a lot of football stuff Man City, Man United, uh, Liverpool and they're reasonably big budget like obviously they get the players for free sort of because it's all to do their contracts but you know um, you're talking you know upwards of a hundred thousand pounds for the shoot sort of thing um, on, on those sort of jobs I guess. Okay. So tell us about working with the sports clubs and so what sort of stuff are they making and are you involved in? Um, I've done all sorts of them. I actually, um, so I've been stepping up a little bit um, to gaffer some some bits and I did the uh, Man City kit launch for next season, whenever that's going to be now. Um, and uh, yeah, so... Um, they set up like a whole media day in, in one of their training training places. So yeah, they do kit stuff, they um, app things. The the one of the biggest things they do at um, United especially is that they do a, an indoor um, one of their indoor pitches, like the youth academy pitch. They'll block it out for a day for loads of media people to come in who set up little studios, little green screens, little bits and bobs. All inside, you have like thirty. 30 odd like little sections I guess sometimes slightly less and then uh, yeah all the players come through and go to each one and do their little bits at each one and you get all sorts of stuff um, you know Adidas Nike depending on what club it is um, Alibaba 
like the the E, the other eBay thing, I don't know what it is, um, all, all sorts of random stuff, uh, little, little apps or, um, you know, airlines, fragrances, I mean, all sorts. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're quite heavily involved, obviously, because they're quite influential, I guess, these days, football players. Okay, cool. So, for those, for, for people that don't know, you said that you, gaff, you, you gaffered on the kit launch. What What is that for people that are unfamiliar with the term? Um, so, uh, the the structure of the lighting department is the head of well, lighting and cameras, the director of photography, who works closely with the gaffer, who's the head of the lighting department, and they create the look of whatever, you, whatever you're shooting together. So the gaffer's role is to, to, to work with the director of photography, um, take what they, want as an image uh you know that you'll have some um what's the word um oh, what's the word <laughs> what am i doing i'm doing the um aesthetic no um what's it, images what do you call them references yeah reference images that's all that, yeah yeah <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Reference. Wow. Um, yeah. So, working with the director of photography, um, he'll he'll have some references of, of how he wants to light it, and then it's your job to to take that away and maybe figure out what sources you will use, um, and how to light it to create the image or mood that they want as well as the technical side of it, of working out how much power you need and um, how much manpower you need um, you know, cable runs, what, what equipment's going to work best in, you know, uh, in what space that you got, you, you don't want to take in anything too big into a small space and, or, you know, whatever it happens to be depends on the project. Um, but yeah, so basically you're the technical person that works alongside the director of photography to make it happen lighting wise a lot of logistics then yeah logistics is yeah part of it as well as like yeah getting kit to and from location yeah cool. sounds like a good job i i enjoy it yeah um it's yeah a good mix of technical and um and creative so yeah i enjoy and it how long how long has your journey been from from getting your first jobs on production to to start into gaffer productions um so i'm in my i've just done my third full year um in the industry uh, and i'm just getting some opportunities now i've done small bits before um um yeah it's a strange one because well for me anyway I, I i try and do some small stuff short films and whatever where I, where i'll gaffer them so you know it's a bit more of a uh, of a of a playground i guess you can experiment with stuff and, and whatever and you don't have to have a tremendous amount of experience and um, but if you want to gaffer a feature film in hollywood you know that's years of of working your way up through the lighting department and, and understanding how everything works together. Um, I've been quite lucky, I guess, that a company that I work for have sort of grown quite a bit since I met them three years ago and they've sort of taken me along, I guess, which has been nice. Um, but yeah, from, from starting out of uh, knowing pretty much nothing no, knowing enough from from my from leaving uni, but you know, in reality, knowing like about a specific job, not a lot. Um, yeah, about th three years to starting to think about stepping up. Brilliant. Um, in a long-winded way of saying that. <laughs> uh, this, this is a difficult question to put you on the spot with, but um, and especially because you came into this a little bit later than people do 
generally speaking with college because you came back into education right when you came and did the foundation degree yeah. so like i say it's a difficult question but what advice would you give a 15 year old josh what advice would give 15 year old me do what you did do what, do what you wanted to do because you know I, I think that so I, I left i went to uni when i was 18 and i um, I went into a degree that was my second choice, basically, and I wasn't happy, so I left university at 18. Uh, did the first four year, but then left, and went to work and realised that I didn't want to do. I didn't want to work in bars, and I didn't want to work in retail, and I didn't want to work in this and that, and, and figured out what I wanted to do, and and then I sort of went and did it. So, yeah. I, I would advise not going to uni in the first place and, and giving myself more time to decide what was for me. That's good. I think it was um, a lot of people wouldn't have done what you did and would have spent the rest of their life kind of looking and going, oh, I kind of wish I'd done that. You know, a, a lot of people would have been like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not that happy with what I'm doing, but I'm doing it and I've, I've kind of come this far. Yeah. You know, so it's a really brave decision, but it's, it's worked out really well for you, right? I mean, for me, it's worked out very well, yes. I, 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 had, I had opportunities to go and uh, a friend of mine owns a coffee company and he's like, oh, come, and, come and roast the coffee for us. You know, it's, it's this amount of money. I think they offered me 30K to start with, and I was just like, that's amazing. I'm like 22 or three or whatever. Like, I could have just been, I could have just done that. I mean, pretty comfortable but I didn't I didn't want I didn't want to do that so <laughs> I came and sat with you for a few years <laughs> just what I wanted <laughs> <laughs> thanks Josh I'm going to take that as a compliment <laughs> <clears throat> and I can imagine that some of them lessons you were probably thinking that coffee seems quite appealing right now <laughs> I don't have to learn any more about this. Yeah. <laughs> Over and on again. Um, how did you find transferring from, I mean, when, when you were at college, you were studying a course that made you combine all elements of production from ideas, conception, right the way through to, to post-production and in some circumstances, uh, some circumstances, I, I, <laughs> I don't know where that <laughs> word is. <laughs> circumstances I think I was trying to say anyway I'm going to try that again um, when you were in college you were you were on a course where you were you were following the production process right away from ideas conception all the way through to post-production and sometimes exhibiting it as well so how does how does now specializing in a role differ to what you did and and how do you feel about where you are now compared to the roles you took previously um Yeah, so when I left Stafford College, um, you know, yeah, we, 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 were, we were relatively broad and I really enjoyed learning all the aspects of, of you know, filmmaking, TV production and all that, you know, getting a good, good grasp of it. And then when I went to Manchester Film School, um, they worked slightly different where they sort of, in, in year one and two, you sort of, you do everything like like we did, and and then like year two you start to narrow down, and year three you sort of specialise. So they asked me what I wanted to do, and I, I said I, I want to be a director of photography. At the end of the day, so I basically went into the camera and lighting department um, for year three. Did a bit of camera, did a bit of lighting, um, and really found out that I much preferred lighting something and and working even the work setting up all the lights and stuff was way more in line with what I wanted than the camera side of it faffing around with, with with little little cables and connectors and stuff yeah not not uh, <laughs> not for me but um yeah so i from this broad thing that i had with stafford college where it taught me all the all the ground a sort of, I guess, a pyramid way of, of like the education just took me in that direction as I went through. 
and and then towards the end of my year my third year I, I i did a few well quite a few actually free jobs on commercials and short films and um and a feature film as well like for for free pretty much um and uh, i did both camera and lighting and then i realized i just like lighting so i just carried on doing that and then i worked my way from there and then and what's the most exciting production you've been involved in to date most exciting production so the the I shouldn't start every thing with so. Um, That's you and every single person. I know, yeah, I know, which is why I'm I'm very aware of it because I, I hear it all the time when when people are doing interviews and they're like, "Don't say so at the start," and then they're like, "So, so." Um, yeah, I I ask it. I ask the start of every question twice. I've developed an interview stutter. Ah, uh, yeah. So what? Uh, what? <laughs> That's what I do a lot. Ask the question again, because I've forgotten. I've forgotten the question. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I know the question. What's the most interesting shoot you've been involved in to date? There's been a couple for different reasons, I guess. Um, the biggest thing I've been involved with was uh, a TV series called The Feed, which was shot around Manchester in the north, Liverpool and Blackburn and stuff in 2018. Eight. And, and and the start of 2019 actually is about eight, eight nine months or something. They they went on in the end. So I was doing dailies on it uh, throughout the whole thing, and uh, I think they they had a budget of around 40, 45 million. I think on that, you know, it was it was a lot, quite a bit of money. Um, that that was good. Um, uh, probably the biggest thing I've worked on. I, I did only a few days on a on a low budget feature in Wales, and that was that was good because, I mean, the setting for it was amazing. Like we're in this valley in in, in Wales, which is incredible. But the second day it rained a lot, and I've ne and it was probably about a foot and a half half deep of mud, and we had to like drag like big old lights through the mud and stuff, and that that was eye opening. Um, to be like, okay, this this is my this is my job. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, that that was that was interesting. And but um, a lot of the stuff that I've been interested in is the I guess I like the football stuff when I'm when I'm doing commercials because I like working with with footballers and and stuff. And, and most of them are actually reasonably nice. There are some that aren't, but you know they they just they want to get in, do their thing, and go home after training sort of thing. So. Yeah, I, I forgot what the question is again, but I'm sort of waffling. <laughs> no, no, I think you covered it. I think you did. You gave a great answer. <clears throat> yeah. You did. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to do a little bit to round it off now, um, yeah. and then we'll then I'll let, then I'll stop the recording and we'll do a little bit more. If that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, thanks thanks for that, Josh. There's some brilliant stories and some absolutely invaluable advice for any young people who are watching this who are thinking they want to get a career in film or in commercial, especially with the variety of routes that are available. Um, I wish you, I wish you well for when things start back up after lockdown, and uh, I hope it all picks up. and And I want to see your name as gaffer on a few more shoots very soon. I would love that too. Don't you know, I would love that. Yeah. And um, thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks, Josh. Take care. I hope you enjoyed that careers talk and that it's opened your eyes to another career in this vast industry. There's more talks on our channel and we're adding to them all the time. So whilst you're here, why not hit the subscribe button? And don't forget to like this video. We'll see you soon.